How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively recent study that tackles a somewhat intriguing question. Based on everything we know about the universe and about the Big Bang, hypothetically, how early could planets like planet Earth form in this early universe with potentially habitable conditions possibly able to support life or at least have conditions for liquid water and relatively stable atmosphere? In other words, if we consider everything we know about planets and planetary formation, what's the earliest that planets like Earth could have formed? In other words, are terrestrial planets and planets like planet Earth a relatively new phenomenon, or could they have formed super early and existed for billions and billions of years? And surprisingly, the answer from the recent study actually suggests that they might have formed even before galaxies. And so let's discuss this in more detail, but first let's discuss some of the assumptions that were made here and discuss this early period that happened not so long after the Big Bang. And well, first of all, quite a lot of predictions about the Big Bang so far has been basically proven correct. For example, we know that CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background, represents some of the earliest light in the universe. This light appeared 370,000 years following the Big Bang and it would be very difficult to explain if the Big Bang theory was incorrect. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. Likewise, we know there is a period where there's really not much to see because this period is known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. It very likely lasted for at least 200 million years, but only some of the first light from the stars finally piercing through all of this and allowing us to see some of the earliest objects. Now at the moment, the record holder for the most distant object is the galaxy we discussed previously and the one you see right here. And here the light is seen when the universe was approximately 290 million years old. But because this galaxy is several million years old, we know the stars must have been born just as early as predicted. So approximately 180 to maybe 200 million years following the Big Bang. But when it comes to galaxies like this and observations of these early stars, there are still some unanswered questions. For example, one obvious question here is really in regards to what's inside this galaxy. What sort of stars? What kind of a star-related activity? And, of course, are there actually any planets? Now, right now, this would be extremely difficult to determine because these are super far away, but this is where various computer simulations can help us resolve some of these mysteries. But the other really big question here is, how exactly did the first stars even form? And what kind of stars were they? And, well, one of the main missions for the James Webb Space Telescope is to actually try to answer these questions, essentially finding these early supernova from which all of these stars were very likely formed and, most importantly, discovering these first stars. And that's because these primordial supernova are believed to have formed from what's known as Population 3 stars. Extremely massive, extremely powerful stars that very likely existed for just a brief period of time before exploding completely and enriching the universe with first elements that were not hydrogen and not helium. Today it's believed these stars very likely existed at a redshift of approximately 20. Or basically when the universe was approximately 150 to maybe 180 million years old. And it's the elements from these stars that then started to form additional population 2 stars, which seem to be visible in this galaxy. And while based on a lot of different computer simulations, such as the one you see right here, the Illustris project, scientists believe that a lot of these early stars very likely formed inside very large concentrations of dark matter, where a lot of gas suddenly collapsed, producing these enormous clouds of molecular hydrogen that then started to form these early stars. But the main question that's being tackled in this study is, of course, okay, so what happened to these early stars right after they exploded and right after they actually started to produce population 2 stars? So essentially, even before they formed galaxies. And more specifically, could they have formed planets, and specifically terrestrial planets? Now, when it comes to some of the oldest planets out there, today the record holder is approximately 13 billion years old. This is actually a planet that was discovered not so long ago in our own galaxy, and it's a planet that's at least 8.5 billion years older than planet Earth. So essentially we know that planets did exist within about 1 billion years following the Big Bang. But what about before that? Now according to previous assumptions, it was actually believed that most of the earlier planets very likely developed following several supernova once enough heavy elements were produced in order to form some of these early planetesimals. In other words, previous assumptions suggested that the universe had to be just a little bit older, or suggesting that even this galaxy possibly doesn't even have planets yet. But that's not the case for this new study that's essentially trying to prove that it might have been possible even before galaxies. And here's how the scientists think it might have worked. And here all of this once again starts with these 
Mysterious Population 3 stars. This is approximately 100 million years following the Big Bang and the redshift of 25. Now, based on a lot of simulations, scientists believe that these stars would have to be quite massive. Anywhere from a few dozen to possibly a few hundred solar masses, which would result in very powerful supernova, leaving behind some kind of a black hole or sometimes leaving behind nothing. In those cases, we actually call these pair instability supernova. And this is a very special case of a supernova in stars of 130 to 250 solar masses, where the star, instead of leaving behind something, is completely blown apart. There is actually an older video in the description that discusses this in more detail and even a potential detection from a few years back. And so it's very likely that around this time, many of these explosions dramatically enriched the universe with the first heavy elements. But because they were so powerful and because there was so much gas around them, they also started to produce some of the first hydrodynamical instabilities. Or basically these tiny clumps of gas produced as a result of the shock from the wave that suddenly mix a lot of supernova ejecta, dramatically enriching it with dust and heavy elements, and, in some cases, forming relatively dense spinning clouds of gas. And so in this particular simulation, researchers were actually able to recreate this and even discover what happens afterwards. Here they modeled the formation of a supernova at a redshift of 20 by using what's known as the Enzo simulation. And they basically started with a really massive star of approximately 200 solar masses. A star that survives for approximately 2 million years and then explodes. Now physically, we still have not seen these explosions with the James Webb, mostly because it would be super far away, but this is one of its primary missions, so one day, hopefully in the next few years, we might see something. But since no black hole was left behind and everything basically exploded, this actually produced a huge amount of heavy elements. Approximately 113 solar masses of metals, or basically things that are not hydrogen and not helium, and 55 solar masses of oxygen, with this entire explosion basically serving as a source of this metallicity enrichment. But after the supernova, we had the formation of this hydrostatic instability. And so after just 3 million years, there was a formation of a definitive new core. A core with approximately 35 solar masses. This is sort of what you see in this image. And this new core is also relatively massive, and so it basically goes through the same cycle and eventually also explodes, which then forms the next star, but this time a star that's a lot less massive, and also a star that contains a lot of complex elements. And though in this case quite a few different stars were formed as a result, at least one of these stars was extremely similar to a typical red dwarf, and more importantly, containing an actual planetesimal disk. A disk that only took 40,000 years to form, and had quite a lot of planetesimals at a distance of 0.5 to 1.5 astronomical units away from the star, so essentially in the so-called habitable zone. But even more interestingly, the simulation also showed that this young star system contained a lot of water. And actually, in terms of composition, it was not so different from the early solar system or from a lot of other star systems we usually observe in various star-forming regions. And so here they had at least one of these cores collapse into a star that contains several Earth masses of planetesimals in basically habitable conditions, with a star potentially just a little bit smaller than the Sun at approximately 70% of the mass. And that's super exciting, because this basically shows us that at least in theory, within just 5 to 6 million years after the formation of the first stars, the universe could already have contained terrestrial planets with possibly habitable conditions somewhere out there. But that's essentially all we have. Just a simulation showing us that planets, terrestrial planets, could have been possible. But everything else would be a speculation. Mostly because we have no idea if these conditions would be similar to planet Earth at all, and we have no idea if these conditions would be enough to start forming early life. For all we know, these stars could have been very different, much more violent, and produce a lot more flares, and so maybe any water and any atmosphere would actually evaporate very quickly. Likewise, the first billion years in the universe was a lot more violent. And so a lot of nearby supernova or a lot of other powerful events would potentially make these planets a little bit less hospitable. But much more importantly, a lot of this assumption right now is based on the idea of population 3 stars and these early supernova. This is something that's still theoretical and still has not been discovered by the James Webb, and so right now we don't really know if any of this is even possible. And so if the James Webb discovers this primordial supernova, it would actually suddenly make the study a lot more interesting. But for now, as long as they remain hypothetical, everything here is also just an assumption. Especially since we have absolutely no idea what these population 3 stars were like. 
We don't know their exact masses, we have no idea how long they lived, and we have no idea what happened after they exploded. Or basically we have some ideas, just no evidence. And so until future studies, or until some new discoveries from the James Webb, at least for now this is just a really curious proposition and a really intriguing assumption that, maybe just maybe, terrestrial planets formed even before galaxies. But until future studies, check out some of the previous videos in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who doesn't know about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.